1.5 degrees Celsius has become an iconic number in relation to climate change. But what is its significance? Why is it important that we keep the warming of our planet below this figure? In 2015, the Paris Agreement, which is a legally binding treaty on climate change, was adopted by 196 nations. The nations involved made a pledge to keep global warming well below 2 degrees Celsius by the end of the century and to strive to keep it at a safer limit of below 1.5 degrees Celsius, which means that by the year 2100, the world's average surface temperature will have risen to no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius warmer than pre-industrial levels. In order to achieve this target, the nations recognised the need to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions by developing and implementing zero carbon solutions. But why is keeping global warming 1.5 degrees Celsius below pre-industrial levels important? Before the Industrial Revolution, humans were not emitting large quantities of fossil carbon by burning oil, gas and coal. The International Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, uses a baseline of 1850 to 1900, as this is the earliest period with reliable near-global temperature measurements. The Paris Agreement set a target to keep global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, based on the assessments of the impacts of climate change at different levels of warming. The use of climate models has shown the vast difference in how different parts of the world are affected by an increase in global temperature of 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to that of 2 degrees Celsius, and that for some countries and vulnerable ecosystems, the risk of grave damage rapidly increases at temperatures exceeding 1.5 degrees Celsius. At present, we have a global temperature rise of 1.1 degrees Celsius, and the planet has already witnessed changes to its climate system and the devastating effects it is having on ecosystems. But what differences are there between what we are experiencing now and what will happen with a 1.5 degrees Celsius rise and what will happen with a 2 degrees Celsius rise? Could a few points of a degree Celsius make such a difference? Well, yes, it will. For example, there will be a huge difference in the frequency and severity of heat waves. Heat waves that on average arose once every 10 years are 4.1 times more frequent with 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming and 5.6 times with a 2 degrees Celsius rise and the intensity of them will increase by 1.9 degrees Celsius for a 1.5 degree increase in global temperature and 2.6 degrees Celsius for a 2 degree increase. It is predicted that the proportion of tropical cyclones reaching category 4 and 5 may increase by around 10% if global temperature rises are limited to 1.5 degrees Celsius, but will increase to 13% if we reach 2 degrees Celsius. The warming of our planet also impacts our ecosystems. At 1.5 degrees Celsius, the Arctic Ocean is predicted to have one ice-free summer every 100 years, but at 2 degrees, ice-free summers could happen every 10 years. The projected rise in global sea levels range from 0.26 to 0.77 metres by the year 2100 for 1 degree Celsius of global warming. If it rises to 2 degrees Celsius, then sea levels will be 0.1 metre more. This does not sound like very much, but it would mean that 10 million more people could be exposed to the risk of flooding. However, sea level rise will continue beyond 2100, even if global warming is limited to 1.5 degrees Celsius in the 21st century, but it would happen more slowly at 1.5 degrees Celsius than at 2, allowing more time for mitigations to be put in place. Biodiversity is already suffering. There are 10,967 species on the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species, which are more likely to become extinct due to climate change. The problem for terrestrial organisms is habitat loss. 105,000 species have been studied and it has been projected that at 1.5 degrees Celsius, 96% of insects, 8% of plants and 4% of vertebrates to lose over half of their climatically determined geographic range. At 2 degrees Celsius, these numbers double. 
Wildfires have become much more common around the world and they have devastating effects on the environment and the people that live in the areas affected. For wildfires to occur, a number of factors need to align, such as persistent heat and the lack of moisture in organic matter, such as trees, shrubs and grasses. Our changing climate provides these conditions in some areas of the world, and there is also a longer fire season. At 2 degrees Celsius of warming, projections show that more areas globally would be at a higher risk of fire danger compared to today. Our oceans have also warmed, with the temperature of the upper few metres of the ocean increasing by approximately 0.13 degrees Celsius per decade over the past 100 years. In 2022, it was 0.69 degrees Celsius higher than the average in the 20th century, and 2023 had the highest sea surface temperatures yet. As our oceans warm, many marine species shift their ranges to higher latitudes, but some species are not able to swim to cooler climes. Coral reefs, for example, are already heavily impacted by increased water temperature, with 14% of corals having disappeared. At 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial values, coral reefs are projected to decline by 70 to 90%, and at 2 degrees Celsius, there will be a 99% decline. 26% of anthropogenic carbon dioxide is absorbed by the oceans. This reduces the pH of the water, making it more acidic, an effect called ocean acidification. From pre-industrial times until 2021, sea surface pH has decreased from 8.11 to 8.05, which corresponds to a 40% rise over that time which will be less if we can keep our temperature down to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Ocean acidification is a problem as it reduces the concentration of carbonate in seawater, which many marine organisms need to be able to build their shells and skeletons, and existing shells may also start to dissolve. There are also thresholds within the climate system which, if crossed, could lead to irreversible changes. These are called tipping points. If we pass 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming, we increase the risk of passing these tipping points. An example is that of the Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets. If they pass their tipping point and collapse, there will be catastrophic rises of global sea levels for centuries. According to the IPCC, if the current warming rate continues, the world would reach a human-induced global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius around 2040 but 2023 has been confirmed as almost reaching this global increase in temperature. It was 1.48 degrees Celsius warmer than the 1850 to 900 pre-industrial level, and close to 50% of days were more than 1.5 degrees Celsius warmer than the pre-industrial levels, and two days in November were, for the first time, more than two degrees Celsius warmer. The oceans were also much warmer, with one third of the oceans having had a marine heat wave on a typical day. By the end of 2023, over 90% of the ocean had experienced heat wave conditions at some point during the year. Antarctic sea ice was well below any previous recorded winter level, and Arctic sea ice was also below average. Glaciers in Western North America and the European Alps did not fare well experiencing an extreme melt season, which added to sea level rise, which reached a record high, worsened by thermal expansion of the oceans. And there were many devastating floods, droughts, tropical cyclones and wildfires around the world. The reasons for these particularly high air and sea temperatures was because of the natural El Nino weather event, which typically increases global temperatures, compounding the effects of human-caused climate change. It has given us a flavour of what is to come if we do not do something about our greenhouse gas emissions. And we have made some progress with the emergence of green technologies and electric vehicles, but we need to go further. Scientists believe that the world will more or less stop warming once net zero carbon emissions are reached, so there is still hope. In subsequent videos, I will be discussing the impact our changing climate as on individual species such as polar bears, as well as whole ecosystems such as coral reefs. 
I hope you will join me on this journey of discovery and learn about our amazing one world and how important it is to do whatever we can to save our beautiful planet and ultimately ourselves from this crisis of our own making. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends.